Thanks for coming to my talk. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about NFC and uh, why, besides my body odor, you shouldn't stand too close to me. Okay. So, uh, so who am I? So, uh, first one to hack iPhone G1 phone. Um, I won this snazzy jacket. I wrote some books. Got some letters I can put after my name sometimes if I feel like it. And uh, and uh, I'm still, even after yesterday's talk by Apple, not a member of the iOS developer program. <laughs> All right, so today, what, what's, on, what's on the agenda? So first I'll tell you why I did this project. Um, then I'll go through some basic stuff about MC so that we all know uh, what I'm talking about and can see uh, you know, what, what MC is all about. And then the, the, the main part of the talk is basically uh, how to fuzz NFC, uh, the NFC stacks on phones. And then I'll look beyond that at, at sort of applications that, that deal with NFC. Um, and finally, I'll have some like demos, uh, and if they're anything like my projector, that will fail horribly. But I have backup videos um, because I've had too many talks totally bomb. So hopefully the videos at least will work. Okay, so, so why NFC? So I started looking at this like nine months ago. And uh, I was actually having lunch with, with Moxie Marlin Spike, and he told me that uh, and the, the code in the Linux kernel looked really weak. And I was like, oh, okay, weak code, I, I like that. And, and MC is like, you know, sort of mobile phone related, and I like phones, and uh, you, know, you, you don't have to like, make the person touch anything, I like that. So there's a lot of things that were kind of appealing. Um, and, and while there's not that many phones right now that have that NFC, like, you know, supposedly, if you believe Johnny Evans, uh, in the future, there's going to be uh, more. So, you know, maybe the next iPhone would have NFC. Who knows? I hope the last one would have it, and it, and it didn't. Um, so, all Nokia phones supposedly from now on are going to have NFC in them. Uh, the the new Samsung phones have it, uh, and then um, the the Windows Phone eights are supposed to have it when when they come out. So anyway, so in, in theory, NFC is going to be something that everyone's going to have in a couple years. So it's it's like you know, pertinent to look at it now. I think. And the thing I found out is it's actually really hard to test NFC. So um, all these things were are sort of the reasons I did it. So um, I wanted to to you know finding bugs is cool and and really like that's what the end of the talk is about is like wow cool check it out I pop all these boxes and stuff. But um, really what this is about was was giving a way that that you know people could could test NFC implementations. So I have a bunch of code you can download it. And, and you know, test the NFC on your phone or on the next phone that comes out and stuff. Um, and, and what I'm really concerned about is like getting owned through NFC. So, so I, I don't really care about uh, you know Google Wallet and, and credit card information, or, or I shouldn't say I don't care, but I didn't look at that. So what I was concerned about is like, can someone you know use this new chip in my phone to 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 you know get a shell on my phone and, and steal all my contacts and all my naked photos and stuff. So, so here's some. So if you're interested, some other guys have done some like really cool research on on like NFC related things, um, like uh, you know getting free gym memberships or you know snacks from vending machines and other like really cool stuff. But that's not what my talk's about. So check out those references if, if you're interested. Um, as far as other people who have looked at at this idea of can you use NFC as as a way to attack a phone, um, Colin Molnar a few years ago looked into uh, you know fuzzing NFC a little bit, but he didn't have a way to automate it, so it was more like write a tag. Put the tag by the phone. Hey, it didn't crash. Right tag. Put the phone tag by the phone. It didn't crash, and so he gave up after, you know, a couple hours. Um, so a, a couple of these academic guys looked at the Nokia 6212 to see if they could find um, attacks against it, and they did. And the attacks they found are kind of similar to what I'll talk about and the, the Nokia phone I looked at. Uh, and finally, Dan Rosenberg found some bugs in the Linux kernel stack. Uh, I think that this is what Moxie was looking at, but it turns out that this code. Is for hardware that doesn't really exist yet. So uh, these are bugs in the NFC stack, but no one's using it yet. But still, it just shows that bugs can exist in the NFC stack. And th that one of the, at least one of those bugs is like really easy to exploit Stack Overflow with no canaries and stuff. It's really sweet. So he shouldn't have told anyone until the chip came out. <laughs> okay, so what's NFC all about? Uh, well, it's it's basically based on RFID and uh, it runs at 13.56 megahertz, um, at least initially. And then uh, the range for it is like four centimeters. So this is like, uh, you know, the, the actual papers and stuff will say ten centimeters, but I've never actually seen that. So in real life, it's more like four centimeters, so like that. And um, you know, there's people who talk about building like big old antennas and, and going across the room and stuff. But for me, uh, it, it's just, you know, you just need to know that you have to be like really close, but you don't have to touch. That's basically what it means. Um, 
Uh, I have a very naughty thing to say just there, but I'm not gonna say it. Okay, so, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm really trying to be good. So, the, the data rates for NFC is uh, like quite slow. So you don't wanna transfer like a bunch of data with it, and it's not really designed to do that. Okay, so how close do you really have to be? So here's like a couple little experiments just to, to give you an idea. So, uh, let me pause this one. So the one on the right, there's a hotel key, NFC card, and a wallet, and a pocket, and you can read it um, with, by like getting close to the pocket. Uh, on this one, it's just like a, a NFC tag and a phone, and so you can see it's basically you know more than a thumb's width um, to read the tag. So that, that's how close you have to be. Um, but then, if you want to actually do something in real life, <laughs> I, I thought I'd do a little experiment. So uh, this is my coworker, uh, Todd Manning, who I understand is he he didn't know this was coming until Black Hat. He was sitting in the audience, and all of a sudden he saw his ass on the screen. <laughs> but. Uh, so here, here's a little video of me trying to, to read his uh, hotel card key um, without him knowing. So here, I'm in the green shirt, he's in the, the checker shirt. Um, you can hear our idle chatter. There it is. I'm so subtle, uh, but I must admit that I was trained by the NSA. So, uh, you know, a normal person might not be able to pull this off. So, so anyway, you, you can't see this, but I looked and it didn't show up. I was like, what the hell? So I was like, well, I'll do it while he's moving. So this is a moving target. It's a little harder. Look, like, I'm looking. It's like, damn, it's not working. So you know, I'm like, I'm just gonna set it on his ass at this point. So that, that, that's the video. Um, thanks. Uh, so, so I was like, I can't believe this didn't work. Like, this totally should have worked. What was the deal? So I followed him back to his room, and he goes to get into his, his hotel room, and he, he pulls the key out of his front pocket. So I was like, oh, okay. So, so anyway, so that's one version of the, you know, what my bugs I'm going to talk about you could do is you know, just file around uncomfortably next to somebody. Um, a, a sort of a more realistic attack is uh, equivalent to ATM card skimmers or something where there would be an MC pay terminal or you know, movie poster or something and you would, you would stick a tag on the side or you would you know, replace the terminal with a fake one or you know, whatever. So I mean tags are like pretty little, like they're just stickers sometimes, um, sometimes they're like plastic cards or whatever. So you can imagine, you know, uh, putting it in a situation where, you know, someone wants to use NFC. So that would be like a way easier attack than, than what I tried to do. Okay, so, so speaking of that, so when, when is NFC on, right? It, it doesn't do any good if it's not on. So NFC basically is on when uh, your phone is awake. So like, uh, you know, this phone, it went to sleep, so NFC is off. And then for newer versions of, of uh, mobile operating systems, that not, if you have a, a passcode, it also has to be unlocked. So for the uh, for ice cream sandwich, it's only on when it's unlocked. And gingerbread, it's on no matter what if, if the device is on. And for the Nokia phone, I look at the low level stack is, is accessible if the if it's not if it's if it's locked. But the high level apps don't behave right unless it's unlocked. So basically, you know, the, the easy scenario is if if the person's like talking on the phone or using the phone or has just finished using the phone and it's unlocked, then you can do the things I'm going to talk about. And then the other thing is, as long as they don't have a passcode on their phone, you can actually wake up the phone and then uh, turn NFC on and then use NFC. So, like, here's a little movie of this. So, here's a Nokia N9, and the tag NFC reader isn't working because it's asleep. The phone is asleep. But uh, you know, this is my friend. The phone's in his pocket or something. So I send him a text message, um, and that wakes up the phone. And then I just run up and you know give him a swat, and uh, then the NFC is working. So. So that's so I would have had I would have been it would have been two step process against my friend Todd Manning. I would have had to send him a text message while I was like in the elevator with him. Okay, so that's that's basically how NFC when NFC is uh, available, uh, how you you know the, a couple ways you could imagine uh, trying to attack someone with an NFC phone. Um, so so now let's talk about NFC. So it's so basically two modes to NFC. One is uh, passive. So this is uh, you know this scenario where you got you know, a phone, an active reading device, and you've got a, a tag. And tags are just like, I said, little stickers or something. So, you know, you just put it up there and then something happens, right? So that's, that's passive. Um, in that case, the, the, the tags don't have a battery or power or anything. They just use the, the power provided by the, the, um, the initiator. So, and the other mode is peer-to-peer. -peer. So, if you have two phones and you want to like share data between them, you just kind of get them close, and NFC will will let you share files that way. And the way that that works is both of them are powered devices, so it's a little different, and they have different protocols and stuff. 
So when I sat down to fuzz this, you know, the stack, I was like, okay, there's like 200 bytes on this card, and I want to, I want to fuzz this. So it, you know, it's probably not that complicated. And then I was like, I got this diagram. I was like, oh shit, it's like super complicated. So um, there's lots and lots of specs, and I, just, you know, you have to sit down and read them all. And I'll just run through them real quick. Uh, so at, at the very lowest level, you've got like, you know, radio waves and stuff. So here, you, this is the, the the spec you would want, and this is. If you you can kind of see it, so uh, this is just a FFT plot I got from using a you know, software defined radio. And then if you want to, uh, you can actually see the radio waves and, and decode them into bits, and it's a real pain in the ass, but it's possible. So here's here's an example of one. Every time it crosses the line, you you get a zero. Otherwise, you get ones. I did it bigger here so you can see. And then there's some sort of decoding scheme where like you get a one if there's two ones unless it's followed by one in which case it's zero one. Anyway, so all these basic rules that allow you to convert this line crossing into actual um, bits and then you can, you can see that this, this, this waveform actually is uh, someone sending hex 26. And hex 26 if you read the spec is uh, the sends rec command which is basically like the wake up. Like NFC here I am wake up. Okay, so that was the like super low level uh, the, where the radio transmissions look like. Uh, I didn't fuzz at that level because it, it was super hard. And I'm, I'm lazy. Okay, so the next thing is uh, initialization, anti collision, stuff like that. So, so whenever a, a device enters, or like say a tag enters the, the phone's um, you know, uh, RF range, then they start to have to you know, work out some initial stuff. And that's what this layer is. There's almost no data exchanged, um, so I didn't fuzz this, although I could have. And I'll, I'll, in a bit I'll show you an example. Of, of this and you'll see what, what these bytes look like. Okay, and then sort of a more interesting layer is when you get a little higher. So, so then you get into, there's lots and lots of different kinds of tags. Um, and each one has, speaks a slightly different protocol. And then at the bottom there's this LCP and that's the, the communications for peer to peer communication. So I'll just show you some details on a couple of those um, because these are the ones I actually fuzz. So one is uh, called type 2 tags, also known as MyFair Ultralight. Um, the, the actual commands that the, the device can, can send to the tag are things like read, write, stuff like that. And the, amount, and the stuff that the tag can, can send back is things like this. So there's, first there's some metadata, it has things like serial numbers. And then there's this capability container and that contains information like version number, how much data to expect, stuff like that. And then there's the actual data itself. Um, and then uh, another type of tag is a type 4 tag called Desfire. So this one's a little different. Here it's like a, a little virtual file system and uh, you, the commands that the, the device can send are like select, read, and update. And so the important thing is just to know that there's this capability container file and then there's a file or files that contain the actual data that you want to send. So the way that it typically works is the phone will be like, okay, I want to I wanna read you. Um, so then it, it selects the capability container file, then it reads the capability container file, and that tells it where to find the data. So then it, it selects the data file and then it reads the data. So that's the, the back and forth communication between um, the, the phone and the tag. All right, and then finally, uh, if you have two peer, two peer devices one talking to each other, they send each other these things called PDUs. There's lots of different kinds of PDUs and uh, you know, this is more or less what they look like. So uh, if you want to see what an example exchange of, you know, say I want to share like the greatest, coolest, you know, video of, uh, with you. Um, I would send this connect PDU with some parameters and like what service I want to connect to. Then I would, uh, you would respond with a connection complete, a CC PDU. Then I'd send you an I PDU, I stands for information. <coughs> You'd either send me back another information or an RR, which is just like an acknowledgement. And we just go back and forth sending data back until uh, one of us is done and sends a disconnect. All right, and then um, unlike the tags, the, uh, the LLCP is more like a, a connection and then you have to say where you want to connect to. So there's different kinds of service endpoints that you can connect to. And, and all the like uh, stuff I looked at I only saw two. One was called MPP and that was I saw on the Android phones and then another is Snap which you see on like other phones like Nokia's and stuff. Okay, so uh, all that's left is, you know, so far it's just how to communicate data back and forth but I haven't talked about the actual data. So the actual data is called, uh, is stored, it can be anything, but it's normally stored in uh, a format called NDEF. So this is just some binary um, data and it describes different things that, that it can contain. It can contain lots of different kinds of data. 
And I, I talked about it, the, at, I gave this talk in Black Hat, um, except that talk was like a lot more expensive than this talk. So uh, you guys are really getting your money's worth. Um, so the, uh, the, the, the Black Hat badges had MC and you could read the NDEF data and stuff off them. But anyway, so NDEF is just the, the format of the data that is typically exchanged. So, uh, you know, I sit down and I read specs for, you know, three months and I'm about to blow my brains out. So I, I finally get an antenna and I actually look at the data and I, you know, because I want to use something like Wireshark, but they don't have it. So I, instead, I, I look at this. So I, I get a, a prox mark. You can sniff the traffic and see what it looks like. So this is what the traffic looks like between uh, an NFC reader and a um, Type 2 MyFair Ultralight card. So I don't know if you can read it, but I'll just explain it anyway. So, so the first reader is uh, like, hey, wake up. And then um, the card says, okay, I have a seven byte serial number. And then the reader says, cool, give it to me. And the reader says, okay, here's the first three bytes. And then the reader's like, okay, I got those three bytes. Are they these? And he's like, yep. And then he says, uh, okay, send me more. And he says, okay, here's the rest. And he says, were they these? And he says, so uh, anyway, and the other thing that happens is at, at some point he, the, the tag said, by the way, I'm a type 2 tag. So once they get to this point, they've, they've done the initialization and they're ready to actually do the data and, and they know to use the type 2 protocol. So he, he knows he can do read. So he reads column 8 from that chart I showed you. Uh, the tag responds with a bunch of data. And then the, uh, he reads the third one, which is that capability container stuff. So. He, he read, er, the card sends, the tag sends this data, and then he, he reads the actual end up data, sends that data. So anyway, you can imagine, start thinking about what you want to fuzz, right? So you could fuzz like the serial number and stuff, but I didn't because it seemed like a waste. But you can start to fuzz, you know, like the serial numbers and the memory stuff, and then down here you can fuzz the end up data. So there's stuff to fuzz, but not a ton. Um, and then I, I, if you look at that last slide, I pulled out the actual end up data, and you can break that end up data out too and see what it looks like. So in this example, it starts with a three that just says, hey, it's NDEF. And then it says a, a link. So NDEF is basically a type link value. So it's linked and then it says like, uh, okay, I'm a D1 which says I'm a message to begin, message to end, which means I'm just a complete message. Short record, which means my links are one byte as opposed to four. And then like I'm a well-known type. And then it's like type link, payload link, type, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, type, uh, and then, so once you know that the type is T for text, then you, you look at that spec and see how text data looks like. And eventually you break it out to some text and then you're done. So you can extract this data and you can imagine like fuzzing these, these things and there's some link values and so there's some potential for some coolness. But then you gotta, you know, so at this point, I, you know, I read the specs, I understood MC, like, you know, everyone in this room now, so, you know, we're all MC experts. And uh, how, you know, where are the bugs gonna be? So uh, if you look at, say, the, the software stack on an Android phone, it looks something like this for NFC. So you've got the kernel. There's some driver in the kernel that is, uh, you know, talking to the hardware, and, uh, you know, the, the actual NFC chip. And then there's, a, there's an Android service that deals with all the, the NFC data. And then there's applications that consume the data afterwards. So uh, in, in this picture, the driver's native code. Inside the service are some native code libraries, um, but mostly uh, the service is written in Java. Um, and likewise, this tags application that handles uh, the, the end of data is written in Java. So if you're looking for memory corruption bugs, like you're kind of limited, right, to just these native code dudes. Um, the, the, the Migo, which is the other phone I looked at, uh, Nokia and 9 running Migo, uh, which was the reason I chose these two phones, by the way, is like, Last fall, they were more or less the only phones I could get my hand on that had NFC. Um, and then uh, the Migo had the advantage of being kind of Linuxy, so which is something that I like. Turns out, at least in the U.S., there's, there's not many people with Nokia N9s, but uh, there's a few people. Like I, I saw Travis Goodspeed has one the other night. Uh, saw my totally own his ass. And then uh, I, I heard HD Moore might have one too. So uh, I want to see see uh, those guys on the phone. I'm going to be like all over them. Okay, so the, the Migo stack basically looks like um, the Android stack. The biggest difference, so that, you know, there's kernel, driver, service, and then applications that, that consume the data. The difference is here, everything's native code. So it seems there's at least a potential for some more bugs. All right, so, so I already kind of mentioned this, but, uh, you know, so you, when you sit back and say, okay, where are the bugs? Well, 
There could be bugs in the actual MFC specific code, like the thing that's parsing NDFs or parsing capability containers or something. Or there could be bugs in the applications, like tags, that are, that are actually processing the data afterwards. We want to look for bugs in both those spots. So uh, the first thing I wanted to do is fuzz the low-level stuff, because that's uh, like, you know, it's the whole, uh, you know, when you're when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So I do fuzzing, and so everything I want to do is starts with with fuzzing. So so fuzzing on MC is a little hard. It took me like uh, six months to get this fuzzer running. So the first thing you do is you you create data, and then you want to present it to the phone, and then you want to monitor the the phone for uh, you know crashes and stuff. So the test case generation is is really pretty simple. I used two approaches. The first one was, uh, you know, what they call dumb fuzzing, mutation-based fuzzing. Uh, so I just got some valid data and did some bit flipping, added some bits, stuff like that. So you know, valid data for like these are like uh, PDUs, these are capability containers, these are NDFs. So uh, you know, just got a bunch of data and then started flipping it. And then I also, at least for the NDFs, uh, used Solly to to create some. Uh, fuzzed NDFs, uh, you know, so that they you could have like very long strings, but all the everything else is right, like the you know the links are right and stuff like that. So I tried both approaches, and um, and I generated like something like fifty thousand test cases for for each of the phones. Um, so then the the question, the hard that part was easy. The hard part is like getting the test cases to the phone. It's like NFC is basically designed to be like some dude has a phone, he puts it near some other phone, and then he takes the phone away, right? Um, but I want to just like leave it running overnight, and I only have uh, you know I have, there's only so many interns who will just do this all day. <laughs> so uh, it, like I mentioned before, Colin and Mulner uh, originally did this by hand, and then realized that that was kind of silly. So I had to figure out a way to to automate this. Um, so the first thing I thought is I'll just get some off-the-shelf NFC readers and, and, you, and have them, there's a, a mode called card emulation, which means like pretend to be a, a card, a tag. Um, and then if you go to read it, it, it you know, the phone doesn't know any difference. But the problem is there's like tons of different kinds of NFC hardware. They all kind of claim, you know, in some vague way that they do card emulation, but then when you buy it, um, they don't and, you know, they, they, the, the help support dudes are like, oh yeah, we didn't actually do that. We can, we can sort of do that. Um, and then there's lots of different software that you can try for the for each of the pieces of hardware. So for a long time, I couldn't get any of uh, them to actually do card emulation. Um, so so then the next approach I, I looked at was using um, a USRP. So here you can do everything um, you know from the, from the very bottom up. You can pretend to do the radio signals and be a card or be a peer and and do everything. And the advantage is you could fuzz everything too. But then I started writing code and you know there's getting these waveforms and decoding waveforms and having to send out more waves and uh, uh, yeah it wasn't working very well. So I'm not a signal analyst apparently and it, the best I could get is I could decode this wave but it took like six seconds and it turns out that you have to respond in like .001 seconds so I was too slow. <laughs> so I, I gave up on that. And then Kyle Molnar at SummerCon this year released uh, an Android injection framework that would uh, theoretically allow you to inject um, data into you know, the, the NFC daemon so it would think that you had just presented a tag. But um, I don't think anyone's ever used that to fuzz yet. And uh, also you run, it turns out the bugs I'm going to tell you about, a lot of them are related to timing issues and so you won't get those either. So, so there's some reasons you wouldn't want to do this. But it's at least a, a possibility. So finally I found uh, I, after I do, did all that stuff and uh, gave up, I eventually went back and, and actually found some hardware that worked. So, if you get this this reader and use that software, or this reader and that software, you're in business. So you can plug those in, and they'll pretend to be cards, and you can read them. So now, it, with that, with those combinations of hardware and software, I can fuzz the parts of the spec that are this like ugly green color. So it's like you know roughly half or something. So there's still lots of work that you guys can do if you want. Um, this is what I did. So let's start talking about uh, how we did it. So at the top level, fuzzy NDFs was pretty easy. So I, had, I already had a bunch of you know fuzzed NDFs. I just had to get them to the phone. And libnfc comes with a little program that basically does exactly that. It takes in a binary file and presents that as an NDF to uh, to the phone. So uh, that part was easy. Um, then to, if I wanted to fuzz this part, the the purple part. Uh, that then I want to fuzz the the you know the sort of low level type two transactions and so what I did there is I just made some modifications to libnfc 
to allow me to modify these bytes that weren't, you know, the, the metadata bytes of the things like capability container. So it just, you know, changed that, that program and then it was working pretty good. Pretty much the same thing for the type 4 fuzzing. So if I want to do the low level stuff, all I did was instead of fuzzing the NDEF data, which is what the libmnfc wants you to do, I just changed libmnfc to instead <coughs> allow me to supply a capability container file. And then finally, uh, fuzzing LLCP, so the peer to peer communication. Um, I just again I modified uh, this time NFC PY to uh, allow me to change the, the connecting information PDUs. Okay, so that was cool. So what I could do at that point was I could emulate a tag, I could put the phone down, and it would read the tag. And those tags could have like crazy messed up fields. Um, but at that, but then I need to like do that a lot, right? And again, my my intern started quitting after a couple hours, so I had to figure out a way to automate that. And so basically what I did, would do is I would just turn off NFC, I would change the tag to be something new, and then I would turn on NFC and that would be sort of the equivalent of, of presenting the tag. And then I would, once that was done, then I would turn off NFC, change the tag, turn on NFC, so forth. And um, there's a couple ways here that you can turn off or turn on NFC. Hey, you're leaving my talk? Uh, the demos are still coming. The, the cool part is at the end, this is the, the painful part, where you learn to appreciate the hard work I did before the whiz bang demos. <laughs> All right. Thanks. All right, so uh, he's going to leave and be like, man, that talk was so boring. It was just all about specs and shit. So, uh, all right, anyway, so then I needed a way that it turns out NFC readers aren't designed to like emulate 10,000 tags, you know, in a day. So they, after like a little bit, they just freeze up. And the way the, the support people say the way you fix that is you just unplug it and plug it back in and everything's great, hard, hard reset. I was like, well, you know, I don't know if that's actually better than doing this with the phone if I'm doing this with the USB. <laughs> so uh, I got this, I found this USB hub that I could control the power on so in software I could turn the power off and then back on. Um, and, and so it was kind of like plugging it and unplugging it. And you also notice like a lot of people come up to me and be like, Charlie, like how do you find time to do all this research? And I say, well, I totally, uh, I don't do any household chores at all. And so you can see like total water damage in my wall. It's like, nah, I'll just set up my fuzzer right next to it. <laughs> all right, so, so the final part of the puzzle is looking for crashes. And in Android it's super easy. They have Logcat which basically tells you any time anything crashes. And on uh, Migo, uh, no one's really ever looked at that operating system. So I, it turns out they have GDB though. So I just GDB attached to the, the server or um, the service and then I, uh, and then in case other things crashed I just did basically a PS before and after setting the NDEF and looked to see if anything, you know, significant had changed. Okay, and then finally, like I wanted to make sure NFC was still working so between every fuzz test case I would send a valid test case, a valid, you know, NDEF file or something. Um, and then I would just make sure that that worked and if not I would kind of restart everything. So in Android, tags puts things in a SQLite database so you can just check to make sure the thing you just sent shows up there. And in Migo, if you start the NFC daemon uh, with this extra, you know, verbosity setting, it actually shows you the NDEFs that it's reading in syslog, so you can look to make sure everything's working great. All right, so uh, here is like super boring videos, but it took me six months to make, so you're gonna watch it. <laughs> so here's here's a Nokia N9. So this is like the valid test case. This is the invalid test case. It, it can't read it. And this is the valid test case. I would send it like a random number. And this is the uh, invalid test case. Uh, here is a uh, Nexus S. Go. Go Nexus S. There we go. So, I'll even turn it up. Oh, there it is. Beauty. So, this one is a valid test case, and then there's an invalid test case that doesn't even show up. And then there is another valid test case. And so, if, if you lived in my house, you would just hear like in the background all day, all night. Blink. 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 So, it's pretty annoying, but uh, you know, that's what I do for science. And then the other thing that happened in my house is that one stupid reader, the big one, it, in, in some weird situations it would just start like making this huge loud noise. I was like, uh, 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 like that loud. And I was like, well, this isn't ideal. So I, at first I tried, I put a pillow on it and it's <laughs> you could still hear it. So that's why I moved eventually to my basement that's all flooded up. Okay, so finally um, I did the actual fuzzing. So like I said, it was like 50,000 test cases. I fuzzed against the latest OS that was available at the time last fall, which was 233 for gingerbread and 1.2 for, for the Nokias. And as you saw in the video, each test case would take around, you know, five or ten seconds. 
So it was, it was a very, very slow process. Um, so as soon as you start fuzzing, you'll basically start to see things crashing and, and stuff. So uh, the first thing that, that you'll see crash is tags. Um, tags like crash is super easy, but the problem is it's written in Java, so like it's not very exciting. So it's just Java exceptions, you can't really do anything um, with that. Keep fuzzing and eventually uh, the NMC daemon will start dying. Um, in this case, again, it's a Java exception, so not super cool. But at least it's good to know your fuzzer's working. Um, and then finally you get some native code crashes, so that's cool. Um, here's one, it's a no pointer reference, so it's still not so exciting, but at least again, it's like, wow, at least it crashed in native code, I'm, I'm getting there. So this is an example of if you send a uh, connection complete PDU before you establish a connection, it, it the reference is a no pointer. All right, and then uh, finally some actual bugs, and this is in the um, two, what I say, two, two, three gingerbread uh, NFC stack. So the key is to look at this this thing, LCP check LCP. So this showed up in the logs, and then it, it crashed in abort uh, from free. So uh, this is the source code for for that. So the cool thing about Android is you can look at the source code. So if you look here, is it's doing you know it's checking LCP, blah 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 blah. It allocates a buffer, and then if things don't work out right, uh, there's there's dot 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 here. So something happens, and then if things don't work out, it prints that thing which you saw in the log. And then it frees the buffer, cool. And then it goes to down here and it calls dnit, which frees the buffer, which is not cool. So this is a double free. Uh, you know, if, if with some work you could write, maybe write an exploit for it. And, and so the cool thing about this exploit, if you wrote it, which I didn't, would be, uh, you know, basically you present a tag to a phone and you get a shell, right? So that would be like pretty exciting, I think. But anyway, um, this would be, this would give you uh, code access as the NFC daemon. Which does not have internet access, but does have uh, Bluetooth admin access, which, as you'll see later, is like pretty awesome. So, what about this? Well, being the responsible uh, researcher I am, uh, Google actually found it without me because uh, I didn't report it. So, uh, it's fixed though an ice cream sandwich, which is cool. The bad thing is that even though it's fixed an ice cream sandwich and, of course, jelly bean, um, most people still run gingerbread devices. So, there's still like some some guys out there you could you can get close to in the elevator and maybe get a shell. Okay, so now this is the part of the talk where I wasted so much time it's not even funny. So it turns out I found a bunch of these other like really awesome memory corruption bugs in the gingerbread stack, um, but I could never replicate them in, in any reasonable fashion. Um, so the, I, I suspect they have to do with timing issues because uh, if I ran the same thousand test cases I would always get, you know, these same crashes and the same like number of them more or less, but they weren't ever in the same spot. Um, so I couldn't really replicate it. But anyway, here are some like super cool memory corruption crashes uh, that may or may not be fixed. There, it's just a mystery. So here's one that crashes in DL malloc called calls abort, and that usually happens when there's memory corruption. Here's one that happens in DL free calls abort, and that happens a lot in memory corruption. Here's one that crashes in free when it's trying to uh, unlink a chunk uh, where the, the the back pointer is is screwed up. That's memory corruption for sure. Um, and then here's one more. So anyway, a bunch of crashes I found, never, never hunted down. Reran the test cases and each time it took like four days, uh, so many times that it, it's it's insane. But um, anyway, so the moral of the story is if Google had a decent tool chain for me to use, there'd be like you know maybe four more bugs I would have not reported to them. Okay, so uh, I'm just kidding. I'm I, I'm I'm a very responsible person. If any reporters are here, I never do anything bad. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Okay, so, so, so that's the NFC stack. So found some bugs in gingerbread. Uh, some are fixed, some may not be fixed. And then there's, I didn't find any bugs in the N9 stack. So that means either their code, which is all native code, is, is uh, perfect, or there was something wrong with my fuzzer. So uh, please fix my fuzzer for me. <laughs> um, so now the question is fine. The lower, I've looked at the, the low level NFC code, and that was like pretty good. There weren't too many bugs. Um, but what about the higher level stuff, right? So, so it turns out that, that Nokia and Google can do a pretty good job at parsing 200 bytes on an NFC tag. Um, that's what NFC basically is. But what about these other apps? Can they do that? Um, so at first glance you look at what happens when you present a tag to NFC and it's super boring. So uh, gingerbread, it just, you know, if, if, they, if they can screw up, you know, printing a string to a screen, like, that's pretty bad, but they didn't. So here's a string, here's a string, here's a string. So super boring, nothing exciting going on. But then they added all these like extra features. Uh, starting an ice cream sandwich, Android has this thing called Beam, 
Nokia has a, this, this equivalent thing called content sharing and uh, also this Bluetooth pairing thing. So if we start to look at these, things get a little more interesting. So what's Android Beam? Basically, it's a way for you and your friend who both have Android phones to like share files and, and pictures and stuff like that. So, uh, or, or I guess in this case, really web, web pages. So uh, how does it work now that you guys understand all the specs? You, 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 this sentence will make sense to you when it wouldn't have an hour ago. They use LLC, LLCP with Snap and they fall back to LLCP and MPP. See like what you learned. Um, and and the, the interesting thing is you can see here I'm beaming this game called Crime City, and, which is like a fun game. You should get it. But uh, to beam it I have to press a button, but the guy on the receiving side, it just gets beamed and they can't do anything, it just shows up. It's sort of the opposite of, of what you, know, you might want to design if you were thinking about security. <laughs> so uh, how is this implemented? Like it's designed for two phones to be close to each other, but the way it's implemented is uh, because it, like most things in Android with intents, and so that means as long as it gets an intent, it doesn't matter if it came via another phone or a tag. So you can still get it to do things like open up a web page um, just by getting a tag close to it. So uh, you know, if I get close to Todd Manning on the elevator, I can make his phone open up a web page uh, to a URL I specify, which is uh, not not probably what what would be good. So here's here's an example of just to show you how web pages get opened up. You you get to a tag and look, it goes to a website. So before you know, I, I trusted as much as I distrust vendors, um, I, I can trust them to to, to parse. 200 bytes, right? But now I have to trust them to parse what a web browser parses, right? And I don't trust that. So, you know, HTML, movies, videos, images, sounds, fonts. So now you can get to all this stuff through NFC. Um, okay, so now time for a demo. Uh, I gotta thank uh, Josh, J, J Duck, Drake, and uh, uh, I spelled wrong. Uh, Georg Wichersky. So they, they wrote this exploit for or with, with me, I should say, but they did most of the work. Um, that it's 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 just an Android exploit, right? It's an Android browser exploit, but you know uh, you can get to it through NFC. So, so let me show you this and, and see if it works. And I have a, a backup movie if it doesn't work. So hey, look, I have a project meeting today. Um, okay, so here is here is an exploit. So here in this window, uh, I have a Netcat listener. Here I have a phone. Uh, so this is a Android phone running 401. So this particular web, it's a WebKit bug, is fixed in 404, but uh, it's still kind of cool. So anyway, here's a phone, right? I'm talking on the phone in a busy subway and some pervert comes up to me and is like, hey Charlie, look at this. Oh, what, 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 what? Oh, look, there's something, oh wait, oh, it's gone. What, what happened? Right? And then over here is a shell. Anyway, it's pretty awesome. So touch a tag, get a shell. Okay, oh, here's the movie if you didn't believe it was going to work. All right, but it, it of course worked. <laughs> that movie, why, why did I do that? Okay, so, um, so the point of that is it's not that, wow, there's another WebKit bug, right? The point is that while you thought the NFC attack service was, you know, the 200 bytes of NDEF data, really the NFC attack service is the browser, right? And the browser, uh, you know, I, I mean, the good news is that uh, Google fixed that WebKit bug that was in 401, um, so now the browser is secure. <laughs> um, okay, so that was, that, that was Android. Now let's move on to uh, Travis Goodspeed's phone, the Nokia N9. So it has something just like Android Beam, which allows you to share you know, images and files and stuff like that, um, again, without user interaction. And uh, the thing that's, that's interesting is they have, so in Android, it's NFC is either on or off. And, and on the N9, it's on or off, and you get this extra security option called confirm sharing and connecting. So you would think if you turn that on, then if I tried to push you a video, it would like make you confirm, but it doesn't. So it actually does something else, which I'll talk about in a minute. So here is a, an example of uh, on a Nokia N9. So you can check Bluetooth is off, so I'm not doing anything with Bluetooth. But if I, I so I touch I touch it near to another N9, um, and then I just sit back and wait. And it's like, well, probably nothing bad is going to happen. Oh, it turned on my Bluetooth. Oh, it's downloading something. Well, it's just downloading. What's, what's the harm, right? Uh, so, cool, that, that was it. Oh, shit, it's rendering it. So, um, anyway, so, so the point is without user interaction, uh, you, can, you can push like things like 
uh, PDFs and Word documents and Excel spreadsheets and stuff to a, a phone without the person doing anything. So again, it's just like this much larger attack service than you would have imagined. So instead of the attack service being this little guy that prints a, prints a string, it's actually, you can't do a web page on Nokia, but you can do basically everything else. So what, what kind of bugs could there possibly be? Well, if you're like lazy and you just want to use public bugs, um, you could do that. But, you know, that's pretty lame. So there's libpng, for example, ships on the latest Nokia N9, which is uh, running version 1.3. Um, it has libpng1242, and there's at least two critical vulnerabilities reported on, on that. But, like, you know, you guys are too good to use public bugs. So I, I turned on my fuzzer for a little bit and to see what I could find. And uh, I found this, uh, this, like, invalid free in PowerPoints and this uh, invalid write in PDF. So here, look, dear Google, look, I'm using Valgrind on my phone. See how cool that is? Maybe you should do that for Android. Okay. Or you could, if you want to, don't you want to use those bugs, here's another bug I found, which is pretty awesome. So uh, this bug is in, uh, in the way they parse Word documents. And it's also, turns out to be a zero day in K-Office too. So for your friends who think they're secure because they use Linux, you can just ship them this Word document. And, and own them. <laughs> so basically the way this bug works is, uh, is it allocates a buffer called group grup X or something uh, based on some number you gave it. And then it, it reads in this other value, a uh, short from the, from the data stream you're providing. And then it loops that number of times it just read and writes into your allocated buffer grub X, whatever it reads. So uh, you, can, you have the choice of how big the allocation is, how much data you want to copy, and what data you copy. So uh, it's, a, it's like a classic uh, heap overflow bug. So I didn't write an exploit for this one either, but I'll, I'll show you that it's pretty easy to exploit. So here's an example of a, a, of a data stream. Uh, I made the link big and then I put some data. So it crashes, here's the backtrace, it crashes at some address that isn't, isn't mapped. But if you look at what happened right before it crashed, um, it loaded a value from R3 um, and then it, or, you know, from where R3 is pointing. And then it branched that value. And it turned out I controlled R3. So if I would just point, pointed it to, you know, uh, some, some da other data I controlled, I would have gotten control. So, so basically this is a pretty easy to exploit bug. And again, you would get it just by getting one N9 close to another N9, uh, you could make it open up the Word document and, and own them. Right. So uh, the, the, the final thing I want to show you is this, this. So it turns out that if you Google um, Nokia N9 NFC, you come across like 10,000 versions of this video. So the guy's listening to his music, he's jamming out, and then he gets his phone close to the speakers, and then all of a sudden, like, the whole room is jamming out to his music. And I was like, how did that, how, what, what just happened, right? Like, he's, he's on his phone, and now all of a sudden the speaker's, like, on his phone. It is magic, and where there's magic, there's security problems. So, <laughs> I, so I, bought, I bought one of these speakers, right? And, uh... Uh, I'll show you how it works, I think, except uh, it's kind of, whoa, someone totally hacked my N9 because they went to my talk yesterday, I think. Um, oh, here we go. So now, so I got one of these speakers, I, I got out my N9, and I, I downloaded some free music, and then I was like, okay, let's see what's going to happen. So I, I put it here, is it going to work? Maybe I, oh, give me one more second. See, the, 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 I get the shell to work in the demo, but I can't get, like, the actual music player to work. Um, one, one check real quick and then uh, I will move on. Oh, it should work. Okay, let's try it again. Is, is the thing on? Oh, it's not on. Got, it, the speaker has to be on. <laughs> uh, it's a piece of crap. And, oh, wait, it's working, I think. Yeah. Is it working? So, something magical is going to Oh, look, it's turned blue. Oh, this is, this is crap. Anyway, it was just like the, the, the dude with the, the like, little music symbols floating out of his phone. It was going to look just like that, but it's not working. <laughs> anyway, the point is, I got this thing and I was like, how the hell are these talking to each other? And I didn't do anything. So uh, I looked into it some. Oh, look. It, it made me, I, I, had, oh, I, I had this sharing option on. That's what happened. So now I don't know if it'll work, but who cares? Ooh, it's working. Oh, it worked. So like, I didn't do anything. Well, that time I did do something, but you'll see in a second. So, so there's this, so like I said before, oh, and then to turn it off, you press it again, I think, or I'm just going to plug it in about one second. So, so there's this, oh no, it's got a battery. <laughs> I unplugged it, but it didn't stop. 
So it's so th now we're back to this thing about confirmed sharing. So if you have the confirmed sharing set, which isn't on by default, then it actually would prompt you before before you do the, the the magical speaker thing. But if you just if you don't touch your NFC settings, then it just magically happens like in the video. And so the way that it magic the the you know the behind the curtain behind the magic is this NDEF, right? So if you send it this NDEF data, um, what what you send it is a Bluetooth address, a pin that 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 you've made up that it's gonna then know. And then uh, a name. So it, it turns out, like you know, I grew up in the old days, and and my whole life I've been looking for a root shell. But it turns out what I really wanted was this thing, Bluetooth. <laughs> so here's a video. Um, so here's a, a Bluetooth tag. It's uh, the end of tag. So you can see Bluetooth is off. Cool. Um, and then I'm going to present the tag to the phone. So you imagine, like you know, I'm running up. Hey, how's it going? Swat on the butt. And then uh, you know nothing happened on the phone. If you look, like the phone made that little blue thing, but but that was it. And then even even then, it's kind of kind of screwed. So anyway, it, it it pairs. You look over. Oops, you can't see where I'm pointing. So this thing showed that it pair, it just paired with me, and I didn't need to know the pin or anything like that because I told it the pin to use. Um, and then I can mount the files the file system on the phone and you know read all of its files. And on the phone, there's nothing going on. Um, so thanks. So, so I can see all their files, and then uh, so you can see things like you know pictures they've taken with their camera, um, JPEGs that that they just happened to have downloaded, music, uh, that song I was just playing for you, um, you know like documents. So basically anything you want, you could just download, and, and I think you can write to it too. Although I never bothered. But but you know files are one thing. I want to actually like use the phone, right? This is what makes this cooler than than the than the root shell. So now I'm going to send a text message with the phone. So. Send the text message. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Um, let's let, oh, over here. So there's my phone. Oop! It showed up. I, if I turned this on, you would have actually heard it show up. But I was too late. Okay. Right, well, anyway, so trust me, that text message really sent. And then you can do things like uh, read their contacts. So and, and these are the contacts that are stored on the file system as well as the SIM card. So you can see, uh, you know, in a second here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's fast forward. All right, so anyway, here's their contacts, um, and then finally, like the super end all money shot is then you can actually just like dial their phone for them. <laughs> uh, and I put the camera on so you don't see my phone number, so you don't call me. I'm very clever that way. And then I, I wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, it, it's it's dialing, and then it shows up over here. Compliments of AT and T. Thank you. So, uh, so anyway, the thing is, if you if you don't change that setting, if I just present a tag to you, then I I I, I own your phone. So, th so if you do have that setting set though, you get this nice thing, and uh, I have to then push you a Word document that owns your phone. <laughs> so, uh, just to wrap things up quickly, uh, so NFC is like a whole new way to 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 own people's phones, server side. Uh, it's hard to test them, but I'm releasing tools that will let you test them. Uh, vendors should should let you say okay before people can push Word documents and web pages to you. Here's the code: tinyurl nmc dash files. And here's all the people that helped me while I was doing this, including Cyber Fast Track, which funded part of this work. Thank you.